Hello and welcome to the sixth video in the Professional VTOL Build 2025. Now this is part of a series, I'll put a link down below if you haven't watched the other ones, where Ben from 3DXR is going through his process to set up a 4 plus 1 Professional VTOL. Massive thank you to Ben and the team there up there at 3DXR for spending the time to help pass on this knowledge and know-how. Ben builds literally dozens and dozens and dozens of these things every week for customers and his know-how is is unsurpassed in everyone that I bump into about how to build a great VTOL platform. So thanks again, Ben. Really appreciate the time that you're spending to help pass this on. Now, this is kind of the last in the current series, so hopefully you've enjoyed it so far. This time, it's all about tuning, and it's actually done us a favour leaving this one as long as we have. I did plan to shoot this before, but something fundamental has changed in Ardu Pilot that means that the video we're shooting now would have been different if we'd have done it six months ago. Specifically, the way you do auto-tune on a VTOL now has dramatically improved as of Ardu Pilot 4.6. Before 4.6, there are a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, most of the people that I know were put doing the one where you install a Lua script onto the flight controller. You need a H7 base flight controller, so something like the Cube Pilot Cube Orange Plus, or something like one of the Holy Bro higher end Pixhawk style flight controllers, or even a Matek H743 or something like that. You need a pretty heavyweight piece of kit. Once that Lua script was on there, then you would assign a switch to it. You go and hover it around and you flick into that Lua script. Two big drawbacks to that, of course. You needed a H7 processor and you needed to bugger about with Lua scripts. All those things have disappeared now in Ardu Pilot 4.6. If you're using it for VTOL, the auto tune stuff is called Quick Tune now and it will work on both F4 and F7 and H7 based processors. So the build that I did ages ago with a Matek F405 VTOL flight controller would actually be able to go through this process. And that is massive for those of us in the hobby who haven't got the money to spend on really expensive flight controllers with high-end CPUs. So how do you use it now? Well, I'll hand over to Ben in a minute to take us through the entire process. But very briefly, there is a mode now called Quick Tune. You can enable that, decide what axes you want it playing on. I think we've done it on the defaults for this video. You can then assign a switch in the radio to turn it on and off. A three position switch I would recommend is the best one. It's either off in the middle position, it start the quick tune process in the high position, then that is save the parameters. It gives you the option to bail out if it starts to misbehave. And the way it works is that on each axis, and I'll show you this in a minute, it'll gently start increasing the gain for P and it'll get to a wobble and then it'll back it off and then save that. It'll do it for D and then it'll do it for the other two axes and then you'll be tickety boo. There are going to be messages coming through, so I would recommend using the Yapu script on your radio like you normally would do in any of the videos that I've seen. If you don't know how to do that, send me a message. I'll point you to a video that does it. Also, having it connected to something like a mission planner over telemetry radios or even something like the Beyond Robotics Wi-Fi Mavlink stuff, things that I used in the Ardu Heli series that I'm currently finishing at the moment as well. Those are great because all those that information will come up on the console so you can see when the tune is finished and you're all tickety-boo. This new way of doing it is an awful lot less risky than the previous ways of doing it that invariably, in lots of cases, ended up in the model becoming unstable and crashing. This new version, touch wood, seems to be a lot better. Now, I'll hand over to Ben. Apologies in advance, the audio isn't as good as I would normally like, just because it's shot in a workshop environment, but Ben can take you through how to set it up, and then we'll go through an actual demo of him doing it on the model. Okay, so we're going to show, show you how to use the Quick Tune when you're using Ardu Pilot version 4.6 and above. So this particular aircraft, we've now updated it to the latest stable, which is 4.61 as of today. And what this means is we no longer have to run the Lua script. So I have turned off the scripting and I've removed the previously used script. And the reason why we do that is because essentially the functions of the script are baked into the firmware now. So that's really good. So by default, when you install the latest firmware, it's going to have Quick Tune built in 
as a result, some of these parameters from older versions, often using the script, have a slightly different name. So quick is now spelt with a QW. So let's just go to our full parameters list and search for QW. And the first step you're going to do is enable it. So if it isn't enabled, you won't see all of these items. You'll just have quick enable. So QWIK underscore enable. And we just set that to one. And then we're going to write these parameters. And if you didn't previously see all the options, they will now be pulled in and you'll see them. So like previously, um, we have the same functionality angle max. So we can adjust how aggressive it is. And importantly, if you are using a two position switch, we have the option to auto save once it is completed tuning after a period of time. So if I was using a two position switch, I might say auto save after 10 seconds. And that gives you time to sort of reject the tune if it's not very good. So like before, when we installed the script and enabled it, what we've done now is we've enabled the functionality, but we must match a switch to run this. So like before, I had vacant RC9. So RC9 is a free position switch and we need to tell it what is RC9 going to do. So I can type in the number 181 or I can search the list. And what we're looking for is the quick tune option. So here it is, and um, quick tune. So just over halfway down and quick tune. That'll populate the number 189, which is the code for the, um, the function of quick tune and write those parameters. And that is it, that is all you have to do. So from a fresh install of 4.6 and above, we enable quick and then we match a switch to go into quick tune. As before, and as we'll see in the video in flight, we'll take off the drone. So it should be you know safe to fly and take off. It should be free from huge oscillations. And ideally you would have performed some notch tuning if possible. And from a Q loiter, we will initiate quick tune. And there it is, that simple. A three position switch, you'll put it to the third position to save it. If you've only got a two position switch, you'll set an auto save parameter of a delay of five or 10 seconds, and it'll save them once tuning is complete. There you go, super simple now from 4.6 and above. So this video is actually the live recording of going through a quick tune on the VTOL that's been built as part of this series. So Ben has just taken it off, similar to how we did in the Maiden. At the moment, he's just gently rocking it backwards and forwards, just making sure that everything is okay. Now, he's going to keep it at about 8, 10 feet high, and then he's going to enable quick tune. And then the quick tune is going to start there'll be a notification inside mission planner if you're using telemetry logs and you won't initially see anything but if you listen you'll hear the vibration start it takes a while because it's gently increasing the gains Now that vibration has happened, it's going to pull back on the gain for that particular piece and it's going to increase the gain. I think that was the D that was done first. That was the P gain done. And then it's going to do the other two axes. It's now going to do pitch. Again, the D gain, I think it is, is going to increase first of all. Okay, there's the wobble, that's been set. Now it'll do the P gain. And then finally, it will go on to your. So there's not a lot of stuff here. So now Ben saved those settings and as you can see it's very undramatic. So now Ben is just testing the new tune, just rolling it 
and pitching it and also with a bit of yaw and the settings are actually really nicely done so there was no drama no nastiness the quick tune process has gone through the entire thing and actually set this up beautifully so great way to do it and much nicer now we have this new process as part of RD Pilot 4.6 so there you have it. That's the end of this current series. Massive thank you to Ben and the team up there at 3DXR for their help and support this series. Again, link down below. Do check them out for all of your Ardu Pilot and high-end stuff. I will be potentially doing a couple more videos in the future with VTOL stuff. Now that this tuning is available on 405 based stuff, like this old VTOL build that I did back in 2023, might be time to dust it off, update it to Arduplane 4.6.1 or later and go through the process on there again and hopefully this time it'll be a lot easier. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.